This is George from iTech Legion. You know, over the years we've seen a lot of pieces of server and enterprise equipment try to be brought over into the mainstream market. Sometimes with some success, but most of the time really didn't work out just because enterprise and server type equipment is made for entirely different uh, end results than mainstream equipment. But like I say, we have seen some successes and recently uh, we're seeing it more so with enterprise type SSDs and of course the Asus Sabertooth board, which was a server board brought over into the mainstream with great success. But now one of the places we're gonna start seeing it is we see sm uh, more and more small form factor computers uh, around is going to be with cooling. With small form factors, of course, you need a smaller cooler. Uh, rack mount coolers have been made for quite some time and have to be a very, very short stature. Now we're going to take a uh, look at a couple of pieces from Noctua, the NHD9L and NHU9S, which are fully compliant with 3U and 4U server rack mount applications, but also have some uh, significant advantages in small form factor and HTPC computing. Now, first glance at the D9L and the uh, U9S, obviously very similar, but also very different at the same time. Now, let's just, you know, start with just the packaging. If you were to look at the box, uh, you would think what's inside would pretty much be exactly the same. Exact same uh, feature sets are listed on both boxes. Uh, low profile, obviously, for better compatibility. NFA9, NFA9 premium fan, uh, award-winning design, 100% RAM compatibility, 100% compatibility with PCIe uh, cards on Mini ITX, PWM support and low noise adapter, second firm 2 mounting kit, compatibility with past and future sockets, and six year warranty. So really the big difference you see here is full 3U compatibility and S version with better compatibility. Uh, 3U compatibility calls for it to be 110 millimeters or shorter, which the D9L is. And the S version, as we've seen before with the 12S and the 14S, um, we really don't know if it stands for slim, don't know if it stands for silent because they're actually both of those have 100% RAM compatibility and are very, very silent coolers. But of course, once you get rid of the boxes, that's kind of where the simul similarities end, uh, except for the fact they are both low profile coolers, like we say, uh, one being a dual tower, one being a single tower. Uh, five, six millimeter heat pipes on the U9S, four on the D9L. Now let's take a look at them individually and see exactly what we've got here. Now obviously both pieces are very, very short in stature. The uh, U9S comes in at only 125 centimeters tall, or millimeters I should say tall, and the D9L comes in at only 110 millimeters tall. So you've got some very, very short pieces here. Now the big thing about this being, these are not top flow coolers. They are actually, of course, a tower type cooler. Now why is this an advantage? Well, in a really tight case, um, say you've only got, you know, 110, 120 mil, uh, millimeters, never 130 millimeters of clearance. Sure, you could go with a top-down cooler. And as we've seen, there's some great top-down coolers out there that stand only about, you know, 75 to 100 millimeters tall. However, what's happening there is, in the case, you're not getting good airflow. You've got a top flow there that's going to be starved for air, especially if there's not enough room on top of it. And also it's not promoting flow through the case. You know, typically in an HTPC case, you know, your flow is gonna be coming in one way and trying to run this way. With a top flow cooler blowing down, your VRM is never gonna see any fresh air. Uh, your RAM is gonna be getting heated air uh, and you're not gonna be promoting airflow through the case. So all in all, you've got a better solution here as far as uh, total airflow through the case. Now let's take a quick look at the U9S. As I say, 125 millimeters tall five, six millimeter heat pipes, which as you can see, are arranged as such so that they will all see air as the air flows through the um, fins and through the tower itself. So you do have a staggered offset there. The cooler itself, as you can see, is offset from the base. So you do get 100% compatibility with RAM, uh, even on uh, micro ITX board. As you see, uh, very, very nice design. Typical Noctua design with the Noctua logo right up top. And taking a look down the bottom, as you can see, first off, you notice your uh, Intel retention bracket, uh, which is also your AMD retention bracket also uh, on this piece, comes pre-installed, so very, very easy installation. We'll take a look at the Secu Firm mounting kit. 
um, all copper base, nickel plated, same for the heat pipes, copper heat pipes with nickel plating. As you see here, beautifully finished. Uh, Knoxville always does such a nice job with their finishes, with the build quality of their units. Soldering is absolutely perfect on it, as you can see throughout. It is really just a pristine piece all around. Now, moving over to the D9L, uh, D in the Noctua line is for dual tower. As you see, you've got the two small towers, once again, only 110 millimeters with the four six millimeter heat pipes. Again, nickel plated copper base, beautifully finished. Once again, as we see, retention brackets on it, right out of the box. Very, very easy to mount. Fan in the middle, as you see. Now, both these units do come with extra clips, so you can use a dual fan if you so desire. And also, as you see, once again, the heat pipes are laid out as such so that all the heat pipes will see air as air passes through the tower itself. Again, aluminum fins on the tower. And another really just sparkling build by Noctua. Um, they really do a fantastic job. Now, both use the uh, NFA9 fan, as you see here, PWM fan, so four pin on the connector. Very, very small, 92, mil, uh, 92 millimeter fan, as you see, with 25 millimeter depth, so it is standard depth. Now, fan is a 2000 RPM maximum fan, which produces only 22.8 dB at maximum RPM. So very, very quiet in addition. Uh, also capable of 46.4 CFM, which is pretty astounding for a 92 millimeter fan. That rivals most 120 millimeter fans. And one of the big things here also, only a 400 RPM startup if you're using PWM. So you can have absolute dead silence out of the fan, uh, which is gonna be critical, especially for an HTPC, or if you are using a rack mount and video editing room or whatnot, gonna be very, very critical. Uh, uses the SSO2 bearing, of course, with um, Noctua's famed design for increased turbulence to actually get more airflow through the uh, heatsink. So really very, very nice design on both pieces from Noctua. The D9L and the U9S both come with exactly the same mounting kit. Uh, it does use the SecuFirm 2 mounting system. And going inside, got your three instruction manuals for LGA 2011, LGA 1150X, and AMD. Your Intel set, mounting, AMD set, long L screwdriver, which is going to help you with the mounting, as we're going to see in a few minutes, low noise adapter, tube of Noctua thermal paste, second set of clips for push-pull, should you decide to add a second fan, and underneath it all, is Intel backplate. Now getting to the actual usage of the SecuFirm 2. Uh, I've already gone ahead and applied the thermal interface material to the CPU as you see. And first we're going to start with the backplate. As you see, two holes in the top, one notch in the bottom, which is going to correspond uh, on an LGA 1150 series um, CPU mount on the back of the motherboard. So make sure you get the top two holes on the top and it's just going to slide into place, as you see, with four bolts going through. Got four plastic spacers, which are going to go on. Now, if you're mounting the U9S, you're probably going to want your brackets on the front and back to match up, or if you want top to bottom flow, obviously put them on top and bottom. Either of them now also can be mounted either way, but you'll see front to back you want top and bottom there or side to side if you're doing top to bottom flow. So mounting brackets will just go right on top of there. And four thumb screws. We'll hold them right in place. Something to keep in mind, this can actually be done by hand. Typically, you don't need a screwdriver. Uh, there are stops. The thread actually stops. You don't want to over-tighten. When you feel the screw stop, 
stop turning. Uh, over tightening isn't going to make it any tighter actually. You're just going to wind up stripping out the thumb screw. And once you have all four in place, very simple like I said, take your tower, make sure you've got your orientation correct with the tower offset back away from the rim so you get complete clearance and two screws. Get the first started, just a couple of turns. And go into the back screw. Get that started. These also have a stop so you don't want to over tighten. And you do want to go back and forth so you don't put undue stress on the motherboard. A few turns on each side until you feel the stop. And you're mounted. Last step, fan will go on the front or in the middle if you're mounting a D9L. Two clips. And of course I do know from experience it's easier to do the bottom first and I should have done that, but of course I didn't, so there we go. And into place. Plug your fan in. And you're completely installed. And as you see, you've got great room here. 100% um, RAM compatibility. Complete compatibility, as you see, with the first PCI Express. So no blocking there. Uh, all to Intel standard. So let's take a look, see how these two perform. Going into the performance uh, results, first taking a look with stock CPU on the 4770K, we see the U9S and the D9L doing you know a nice job, very very quiet, only 32 dB uh, with the fans maxed, as you see here. Now adding a second fan does obviously give them some advantage, uh, knocks off a couple of degrees without a problem, and only adds about 1 dB of noise. Very very little uh, noise addition, adding the second fan, which was great to see. So you can pick up a little bit of performance there if you so desire. Now in terms of uh, comparability, um, obviously the much more expensive uh, CryoRig C1 does do a little bit better of a job, as does the NHL 12 and the Thermolab LP53, which is, you know, just really essentially a giant chunk of copper. Um, does a fantastic job, even uses copper fins, but you know, again, you're looking at more expensive top-down coolers there. Now, what got really surprising, moving over, we uh, overclocked the 4770K to 4.4 gigahertz, 1.21 volts, and uh, I actually had to remount, retest all the coolers a couple of times because I was really surprised at the results. Uh, you see the U9S and the D9L take to the overclock very, very well. Uh, they wind up performing as well as the CryoRig C1, outperforming the NHL, uh, or the NHL 12, and really doing a phenomenal job. So you add the dual fan, and again, you pick up a couple of degrees there, and uh, very, very surprising the way they performed. Obviously, no gain in noise here. Everything in this test is very, very quiet, but very, very impressive results on the overclock CPU. That's going to be especially important, you know, if you're doing a gaming rig, uh, not an HTPC. Now, we did one final test. Um, I moved them into uh, just simple test with the CryoRig C1 and uh, the two Noctua coolers here. I moved them over into a Node 605 case using a Z77 uh, Mini ITX motherboard. And what we found was, I just wanted to take a look and see, was there going to be a palpable difference in the VRM and motherboard temperatures in a small enclosure like that? And we absolutely saw a drop in temps in both, as you see here. Uh, about 4 degrees on the VRM and 6 degrees and 5 degrees uh, respectively, so figure about 5 degrees um, on the motherboard temps. So this is again going to be very important if you're doing a gaming rig because you're going to get much better flow through using that horizontal flow, like we said, uh, of the Noctua coolers.
It seems like Noctua never disappoints, and the D9L and the U9S really are no exception here. Noctua set out to build two very small, quiet coolers that were going to be compatible in rack mount systems, uh, 3U and 4U systems uh, specifically. And that's exactly what they've done. The cooling performance was actually very surprising, especially when we put an overclock on them. I really have no explanation for why they responded so well to an overclock. Um, cooling performance, you know, as we saw, with stock cooling was good, you know, and uh, better than expected from a cooler of this size, but you know, not right home phenomenal, but it really kept up with larger, more expensive coolers once we put an overclock on it, which was really good to see. Adding a second fan added almost no noise and increased the performance even more. So now, while these were made for rack mounts, like I say, you know, we can obviously see the benefits in a small form factor gaming system or a small form factor HTPC, where, you know, low noise is gonna be a huge thing and cooling performance is going to be great, you know, uh, great necessity as well, especially in a gaming system. So Noctua has really built some pieces here that are going to correspond very well, not only, like I say, to rack mount systems, but to the community at large. Uh, with that in mind, I'm giving both these pieces Editor's Choice Awards. They are a little pricey. That would be the only downside uh, for what you're getting here, you know, theoretically, at, you know, coming in at around $55 each. But, you know, like I say, there's really nothing in this price class at this um, type of height that's going to do this type of cooling job. You know, we saw that, you know, something like the uh, Thermolab LP53 is going to keep up with it on CPU. But as we saw in the Node 605, you know, it does exactly what we had said in getting the horizontal cooling going and keeping the VRM a bit cooler. So uh, Editor's Choice Award for both of these, very, very well made units, easy to install, great in the case, dead silent, and very, very good cooling performance, which is actually ph um, phenomenal cooling performance when size is taken into consideration.